Hello, everyone. My name is Li Meng Cui. I am a PhD student from the Pennsylvania State University. Thank you for attending this session. Now I will present our paper, Ali, Active Learning on Large-Scale Imbalanced Graphs. This is a joint work with Amazon. In this paper, we studied fraud detection on a shopping website. We constructed a graph from entities such as buyers, sellers, products, reviews, and etc. The goal is to detect abusive users and behaviors such as bad buyers and fake reviews. In this scenario, unlabeled data is abundant but manual labeling is expensive. Active learning can be applied, which is to train a detector that accurately predicts the labels of new instances while requesting as few training labels as possible. The challenge of this problem lies in how to select the most relevant unlabeled samples for human annotator to label in order to improve the model performance at a lower cost. So how do we select the nodes to label? Current methods can be divided into two categories, heuristic methods and learning to learn methods. AGE uses the weighted sum of entropy, density, and centrality to find the best candidates from all unlabeled nodes. Then it asks the Oracle to label it and put it in the labeled node set and trains another epoch of GNN. Different from AGE, Feed Pro selects a set of centers from unlabeled data using k mydoids clustering. Different from AGE, which used the weighted sum of entropy, density, and centrality, ANRMAB uses a multi arm bandit to select one metric from those three. Active HNE extends ANRMAB to heterogeneous networks. GPA uses reversal learning algorithm to select a sequence of nodes which maximize the performance of the GN classifier. MetAL is based on meta-learning algorithm. In order to study the problem of fraud detection on shopping websites, we constructed a large graph from buyers, sellers, products, reviews, and etc. Our goal is to learn a fraud detector to predict whether a given node is abusive behavior or not. For example, fake review. In traditional supervised learning, all the labels of the training samples are given. As the manual labeling is always expensive in real world, we investigated how to select the nodes to query given a labeling budget, which allows us to query the labels of a fixed number of samples in total. At each step, we use an active learning policy to select an unlabeled node from all remaining candidate nodes that have not been queried. Next, we query the label of that node and put it in the training set, then train the fraud detector. After the budget is used up, we train the classifier until convergence. There are two types of methods to design the policy. One is heuristic method, which uses metrics such as entropy, density, and centrality to select the most informative nodes to query. 
The other one is learning to learn method, which uses a network to learn the policy. When it takes an action by selecting the next node to query, it is rewarded by the performance gain of the model on the validation set. In this paper, we chose learning to learn method as metrics such as density, centrality cannot reflect the class well under imbalance setting. There are two key challenges in fraud detection in online shopping websites. First, the prevalence rate of positive samples is extremely low as abusive behaviors only account a very small portion of all behaviors, like around 5%. Hence, we need to find out how to select the nodes to be labeled to ameliorate the effect of imbalance. We solve this problem two-folded by applying focal loss and adapting the reward function. In the original method, both positive and negative samples are weighted as the same. Here, we adapted the algorithm so that the algorithm will be rewarded less if it correctly classifies a negative sample, such as a real buyer. The algorithm will be rewarded more if it correctly classifies a positive sample, such as a bad buyer. Second, the graph constructed from e-commerce websites usually have enormous sizes. Hence, we need to design scalable algorithms that can be applied regardless of the size and sparsity of the data. Here, we apply a graph coarsening strategy, SAC pool, to reduce the model running time while still maintaining the same level of model performance. Now, going back to the first challenge we just mentioned, we apply focal loss in the fraud detector, which is an improved version of cross-entropy loss. It was first proposed in object detection in computer vision domain, where the positive samples like the faces in the bottom left picture are very few compared to the background. Focal loss can focus uh, learning on hard misclassified samples. From this graph, we can see that as PT, the probability of ground truth class is closer to one. The factor goes to zero and the loss for well-classified samples is downweighted. In our case, the well-classified samples are those benign behaviors, such as benign users and reviews. In addition to the detector side, we adapt the reward in order to make the policy network query the nodes which can improve the performance on the minority classes. For example, the abusive buyer. Here we use macro F1 score as the reward signal as it doesn't favor the majority classes like micro F1 does. In order to address the second challenge mentioned, we apply graph coarsening strategy. Graph coarsening is the merging of nodes in a graph to obtain a coarser version of the original graph. It has several benefits. First, the speed. For example, the graph neural network, GraphSage with a graph coarsening layer was 12 times faster than the original model. Second, interpretability. Different from random projections, the super nodes formed by several nodes have a meaning. Third, the simplicity. We can use the same algorithm to process simplified graph as with the original graph. 
we proposed an active learning based method for online fraud detection in shopping websites called Ali. It can effectively select informative unlabeled samples for labeling by maximizing the performance of the fraud detector. Our method has the following innovations. First, our approach gives labeling priority to less confident and underrepresented samples for more accurate detection. Second, it works well with the imbalanced data. Third, to scale our approach to large graphs, we use a graph crossing new strategy, SAC pool. We use several benchmark citation graph data sets, Coral, Cessier, and PubMed. The statistics of the citation graph data sets are presented in table one. We also use data sets created from sampled anonymized logs from an e-commerce website. We construct a graph consisting of sellers, buyers, reviews, and products. Table two shows the approximate numbers of the nodes and edges that we sampled. We use micro F1 and macro F1 to evaluate the performance of all methods on the citation datasets. We tested the performance of Ali on three benchmark citation graph datasets on both balanced and imbalanced settings. The balance setting is the original setting in the dataset. We manually adapt the datasets into binary classes to make the data distribution imbalanced. We treat the smallest class in Coral, Sightseer, and PubMed as the positive class and the rest as the negative class. The positive class ratios are 7, 8, and 21, respectively. From the tables, we can see that Ali constantly outperforms the best baseline in terms of macro F1 and micro F1. We also tested our methods on a real world shopping website data set. This data set lends itself to a highly imbalanced classification problem. Ali achieved an average increase of 3.5% in F1 with 8% relative improvement on the positive classes over the best baseline. It again shows the importance of applying reinforcement learning to curving nodes from the unlabeled data, which directly optimizes the classifier's performance. It is worthwhile to point out that Ali has a higher performance improvement with the abusive buyer class compared with the benign buyer class. This indicates the effectiveness of adapting the reward function to better capture the minority class, such as the abusive buyer and using focal loss to downweigh the well-classified samples. For example, those benign buyers far from the classification boundary. We also conduct a comprehensive ablation study to demonstrate the necessity of each component of Ali. The lines in the figure indicate the running time. Changing the reward function to macro F1 is more effective for improving the F1 of abusive buyers, as micro F1 favors large classes such as the benign buyer, while macro F1 averages F1 per class. When focal loss is not used, the false positive rate increases, resulting in lower precision and F1. This variant performs the worst, indicating that focal loss function contributes the most. Also, we can see that removing the graph crossing module slightly decreases 
the model's performance, but it takes the longest time. Graph constraint model reduces around 20% in running time. To explore the impact of various reward function designs, we consider several variants of Ali that use different reward functions. We did reward macro F1 and micro F1. We find that Ali with macro F1 is superior than weighted reward and micro F1. This verifies that incorporating sample balancing into the reward function design can address the class imbalance issue. We vary the initial training set sizes and query budget to test how Ali varies along these dimensions. The buyer classification task on the e-commerce dataset is used as the example task here. From the results, we can see that Ali outperforms the baselines regardless of the initial training set size and query budget. Thank you for listening. This is the end of my presentation. For any questions, feel free to send me an email.